Alcon Day 2, Booth Boys. Now let me go ahead and put up a disclaimer real quick before I start talking about these guys. I in no way got any kickback, funding, you know, sponsoring, nothing like that from these people. Uh, I know a lot of people are complaining, uh, would complain and say I'm really just doing a huge commercial, but I'm not, okay? These guys is where I've gotten my nerd on for the last five years. These people at this convention, these sellers and dealers, are the coolest guys in the fucking world if you spend the time to actually get to know them instead of saying, oh, here's your comic book, goodbye. So with that, let me tell you a little bit more about the Expo Hall at Alcon. When you think of nerds, you think of role-playing books, dice, and uh, comic books, mainly. Yeah, hey, Fat Man, uh, yeah. I'm not in shot. I'm uh, on the ground here. Yeah, I know, but I've got so much stuff to talk about and show off. Uh, there's no room for you, buddy. You just have to stay down there. Fair enough. But anyway, the place to go for comics in the Houston area is by far Midnight Comics. Midnight Comics is run by a fellow named John, really nice guy. And every year that I've come there, I've normally been able to pick up the certain swag that I've always been looking for. Uh, whether it be some of the comic books that I need to pick up and get backlogs of, um, whether it needs to be one of my new role-playing compendiums to tell me what I'm going to be doing wrong during a game, or whether or not if it's like the new Order of the Stick book, or things like that that are kind of hard to find where I live. Midnight Comics is the place to go. If you ever have a chance, pop on over there. It's a little bit out of the way of the normal town, but it's well worth it. You know, we live in Texas. I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out there. Um, but when you think about Texas, sooner or later, you're going to get the notions of the wild, wild west. Of cowboys and Indians, of lawmen taking it in their own hands, and shooting a varmint for messing with dear old lady's horse pasture. I'm a nerd. It doesn't really work for me. But that's why I picked up a copy of Gutshot. Yes, Gutshot. It's made by Mike Mitchell, excellent fellow who told me all about it, and it actually premiered at Alcon. That was the cool thing about it. I was here the year this game came out. Um, which, I don't know, it doesn't make me feel old, but it makes me feel really cool. Um, it's got a lot of neat stuff in it. Not only is it going to be done in any way you want to, you know, if you want to do just a one-on-one -on -one setting, or if you want to do like a big huge campaign with like people playing sheriffs and people playing outlaws, stuff like that. Um, also, it has a lot of stuff where it gives you good character profiles on people to play. Also, it's got some cool bonus things, like uh, some Alcon footage from the year it came out, um, his first year there, stuff like that. If you have a chance, look it up here. If you don't have a chance, well, you're kind of a loser, and, man, you, you don't deserve to even know what Texas is about, partner. You know, we here at Holy Toaster are huge fans of horror. And if you think about horror, sooner or later, it's going to creep into the dusty old tombs of H.P. Lovecraft, and the god Cthulhu. I am an elder Sildean god! I am Lord Cthulhu! I'm so into you. Get that out of my face. Now what I'm talking about is Cthulhu Live. Cthulhu Live is another book that was released at Alcon, if I'm not mistaken. And it's actually a live action role playing game. That's right, that's a LARP. That you can go out and play Cthulhu. 90% of the LARPs that you're finding now are either based on this or another game. But I'm not going to talk about that because, well, this one's better. This covers everything. Not only does it cover the kind of people that you can play, um, their natural weapons, their costs and efficiencies, their defects, their pluses and minuses. This thing goes into major detail. But it's actually pretty fun as well. And another thing that I've been waiting for in a book, it tells you about how to make props. It actually gives you a how-to guide on making things that will fit the Lovecraftian universe. Including, believe it or not, how to make a ten-foot monster. You deserve that. But that's not all I want to talk about this guy. The guy who wrote this and was putting this out is a guy named Mike Valhalla. Or was it Valhalla? Valhalla! Not exactly sure. But, you know what? He was an awesome dude. And he's written two books that I had to pick up as well. Ghost Hunting in Maryland and Ghost Hunting in Virginia. This is really cool because these are actually more of a, I guess, a road trip for going through these uh, states and finding the ghosts that uh, live there. And it's not taken as, you know, as a joke or as a parody. It's taken as a serious scientific journey 
where you can actually see some of the cool stuff there. It's got some good pictures and got some good just info from the people that live there. Personally, I think he's actually really catching on to something, and I hope they do all 50 states. I know they have one for Texas, but it wasn't written by him. Ah, dice. Dice, 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 dice. A gamer couldn't survive without these. You have to have dice to do about 90% of the things you want to do in role-playing games. Be it D6s, D12s, D1s, D2s, all the way up to D100s, you can't make it without dice. And you couldn't do it without Lou Zachi. I'm not going to say the man created dice, but, well, he's old enough where he looks like he could have been. I'm kidding, actually. He has been in the business a good long time, but he's credited for creating some of the most amazing dice I've ever seen, including the D50, the D100, and the uh, Omega dice, which basically, no matter how you roll it, it will give you the total from a D6, D12, D20, I think a couple more? I mean, it's, it's actually pretty amazing. Also, he's one of the few people that still hand paint his dice. Instead of getting that pressed feeling, you get something that was handmade. That's really cool. So the next time you have a chance, check him out online and see if you can't order yourself a couple of really cool dice. I can't survive without my nerd shirts, okay? I, I have always had a thing for just the goofiest shirts that I can find. That are something brilliantly nerdy that no one else would get unless you're part of you know, the culture. That's why I go to White Lightning Productions. White Lightning Productions has been used in uh, Alcon for about four years now. Um, I always go there every single stinking year and spend a good chunk of money just making sure that I have enough clothing to wear for my nerddom throughout the rest of the year because that's the only time I get my freak on. Um, the guy there is really nice, he's really uh, cool, and also they're linked to, what's the way to put it, some web comics that you might find funny, that might be an adult nature, but go over there and check it out anyway. These guys are really awesome. In fact, um, if you have any ideas for t-shirts, they're always accepting any ideas, and uh, also if you have any, you know, friends that need their nerd, go to these guys, pick up a shirt, they've got some hilarious designs. Sometimes a role-playing convention is about a bunch of fat, sweaty guys throwing dice, me included. But, but sometimes it's actually about really beautiful jewelry, believe it or not. Um, this lovely lady here, she's been making uh, chainmail jewelry for the last probably two, three years that I've come to Alcon. Always beautiful stuff. She makes it out of copper or aluminum. And there's no better way to get a gamer chick than with some gamer bling. It doesn't work for everyone. Um, but the cool thing about it was, though, I got this nice new coif. Ah. I don't think you're supposed to wear it like that. Ah, anime. You know, it really surprises me. This is the first time we've had an anime vendor at Alcon. When I think of geeks and nerdum, you know, sooner or later anime comes into the equation. I mean, it's great viewing and, well, it's us. I guess they split off and made their own subculture. But that's why, thankfully, at Alcon, we've got those anime people. Yes, that's right, those anime people. That's their freaking name. How incredibly cool is that? Not since, um, HolyToaster.com have you had such an ingenious name for a group of people. Um, this was their first year here, of course, and they just started putting up stuff and selling at the, uh, booth. I thought their prices were really reasonable, had some really good deals on some stuff, and... As you can see, I walked away becoming a new collector. Join in next time where we see day three of Alcon and the weirdest adventure we've ever had.